Hey guys, it's Chase from Primo. Uh, I thought we should do a orientation video on one of our fine buildings that we have here. This particular model uh, is a 25 foot bunkhouse. Uh, it has the rear bunk, uh, as you can see right here. I have it flipped up already. Uh, you can travel with this up or down. It makes no preference. I would rather have it down so it's not down to on the clip back there. The reason why I have it up is I kind of want to go over a few things. Uh, right in this rear corner, let me actually get in here. This is actually where your converter is located. You have all your breakers and all your fuses are actually back here. And I actually like the placement of this because it's out of the way. The kids won't touch it. It's out of the main walkway. Uh, but what you need to realize is just like in your house, you have a, uh, a 110 side with all your breakers on it. So if anything stops working, don't freak out. Just make sure the uh, breakers are not tripped just like you would in your house. On the side of that, on the right side of it, you have all your 12 volt side, you have all your fuses. If any of those fuses are burnt, a, a LED will light up and tell you which one is burnt. So you don't have to actually take a test light to it anymore. You'll know right away. Uh, unfortunately, it does not come with any spare. So I would encourage anybody to uh, either come to our porch store or you can go to AutoZone and get the variety pack of fuses just to carry with it. Now a bonus of the power converter is that it actually charges your battery when you're going down the road. It's converting that uh, that 12 volt to charge your battery. So as long as you're plugged into your truck or the campground, you'll be charging that battery, which is very important. Because what we have right here is an Everchill 12 volt refrigerator. Now, I really love these. What you want to remember about these is when you're traveling, you always want everything secured. Everything is about security when you're going down the road. So I would encourage everybody to have this locked before travel. Uh, basically, the best thing about this is, like I just mentioned, when you're going down the road and you plug it into your truck, this can still maintain coolness because it'll be running. What you don't want to do with the 12 volt refrigerators is actually turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. You want to let it run just like the one in your house. It'll actually last longer running than it will if you turn it off, turn it on. Okay? So just to throw that out there, have keep that in mind. A um, couple of other things we're going to notice is you do have the couch slide along with the refrigerator in there. Uh, I do want to briefly go over that. So up here, I call this the heart. This is your monitoring station. You can actually see all your tank levels and you can actually operate your pump and your water heater. Now on this particular model, I have one slide room. I'm gonna come in very briefly, very quiet, strong and sturdy. I'm gonna go right back out with it. And what I want you to pay attention to is the sound that it's gonna make. Now, if you heard that little bit of grinding at the end, that's just a limiter to let you know you're actually all the way out and to tell you to let go of this button. It's going to do the same thing when you're coming in, of course. On the side of that, I have your awning extend and retract. Now, a lot of people ask me the maintenance and, you know, overall overlook of the awnings. What I would recommend is if you're not directly under the awning using it, I would bring it in. The wind just tends to use it as a parachute and the awning could actually be ripped off. So anytime you're not by it and using it, bring it on in. Don't leave it out overnight, okay? Uh, a couple of other important things. A lot of people ask me about the tank. So on this level, you can come and see, you actually have different buttons that you can press to see the levels. Right now, the battery is fully charged, of course. Uh, now the fresh water, it says it on right of the battery. Now your fresh water, is basically just in holding tank. When you're not actually at the campground, you're gonna bring that water with you in the middle of nowhere uh, to dry camp. Now, when you want that water from that tank, it has to have a way to send it to your, your lines. So what you would do is hit this water pump switch on, and that's gonna give you your water pressure. Um, when you're at the city or you're at a campground, you're on a water hose that already has pressure. So you, you don't need that pump switch and you don't need that fresh water tank, okay? Uh, aside from that, you do have 
the black and the grays. Now the black is uh, essentially your, just your sewage, just the water and uh, solids or anything from the toilet going into a tank. Um, what I normally would suggest is to dump your black first, go ahead and get it totally drained, and then you dump your gray right after that. And what that'll do is it'll actually clean out your sewage line going to the dump. That way when you grab it, it's not as uh, nasty. Um, and aside from that, on most of the newer campers nowadays, all of them are equipped with what's called a black tank flush. So what the way that works is you hook up a water hose while you're dumping the black water. And it's basically just a sprinkler system and it cleans out the tank while you're dumping. What you don't want to do is turn that water hose on and have the tank closed. You want to have that tank open, hook up the hose, then turn it on. And just a little pro tip, don't actually use your drinking hose for that. You want to use a separate hose. Uh, it does not have a check valve, meaning you're putting water into it. It's not going to really restrict what goes back into that line, so that could get a little nasty. Use two different colored hoses just to help you remember which one you need. And that's pretty much it for this panel up here. A uh, couple of other things. You're going to notice that they have the floor vents. That's going to be your, for your furnace, which is going to be your propane. And then your AC from the ceiling. I have the thermostat on the wall back here. And I can show you that briefly. So I love this one. This one is really easy to operate. You have your temperature up and down for what the temperature you want to set it at and uh, they have fan mode I actually have it on auto I usually keep it on auto because it'll pretty much do its own thing when it needs to and then every time I hit this mode button it's gonna go to something else off fan cool and furnace I'm gonna hurry up and go back to cool because I don't want it to shut off and come back on just like we don't want to do with the refrigerator you also don't want to do with the AC uh, what I like about this is that this table is removable and you can actually take it off of these legs. The legs come out of these grooves and then what they have is some bumpers. The table will actually sit on the bumpers and then you can actually bring your cushions down and form into a bed. Aside from that, you do have the Velcro so this stays up when you're traveling and when you're trying to try to eat. On the opposite end, you do have the cup holders. You have the storage underneath. And you have the swivel mount bed. Very easy to operate. I always like to go over the stove, so I'll, I'll just touch base on that. Of course, this is real glass, so you don't want to travel with this uh, up. You always want it down in the travel location. These are really, really nice. You have the accent lights, which you can turn on, and you open up the burner that you want. And this one has an electric igniter, so you just go ahead and strike them up, and that's how you turn them on. Of course, when you're done cooking, just go back to home, all right? As far as the oven goes, uh, you have the traditional pilot light on this one. So basically, you just hold this in, hold it on the pilot. I'm still holding. You strike it up. Now, this is very important. Once it strikes, you do not let go. You want to let that coupler burn for a second or two, and then you let go and then turn on whatever temperature you want. Of course, when you're done, don't go back to pilot because all that gas will still be coming. You want to actually turn it all the way off. Okay. Now, for when you are cooking, you have the light and the fan to suck all of the heat or exhaust straight out of the can. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, they do have a bonus feature. You do have quite a bit storage underneath the bed. Right now, we have the tire cover and the manual, um, the manual cranks, which I'll show you shortly, uh, what, what you do with those and where they do, and when to actually app, uh, use them in the application. Um, as far as that goes, I know a lot of people do ask me about the AC filters. Uh, 
it does not matter what brand you have, you will have an AC filter. So on this particular model, this is a GE. Uh, you have these two tabs right here. Your air filter is right down there. You can pull it out. You can wash and dry it. Uh, but what I like to do is just blow it out with an air hose. If you happen to have the air hose, put it right back in. You're good to go for another couple of months or so. Uh, you can order those with us or um, I believe you can get them on Amazon. They might just be a little hard to find. So you might need to just come to us with your model number and we can get you fixed up. Uh, you're going to notice the entertainment center. You're going to see USB chargers for phones, any kind of accessories all over the place. Uh, lower bunk, higher bunk. You do have some more on the opposite end here, along with your light switch. But what I wanted to go over with this is uh, the radio portion of this. So what you're going to see, I already have it on. I'll just turn it up. I apologize, I'm not sure what's on. Uh, I just wanted to show you the zone one and zone two, of course. It shows you what zone you're on at the bottom of the display. Right now I'm on zone one and that's inside speakers only. I can turn those off and turn zone two on, which is outside only. Now, if you prefer, you can have both of them on, neither of them on, any kind of orientation you would like. Um, aside from that, you do have all the fancy stuff, the USB plug for a phone charger, you have the uh, HDMI cable as well. But what I wanted to show you is this right here. We already have a factory installed HDMI cable, which means you can actually plug this straight into your TV once you have a TV here. And you can watch TV off of your TV through your surround sound. So that's really nice. And I believe that's about it uh, as far as the inside goes. What what really important is the use of the chemicals and the kind of toilet paper that you need for the tank system. Um, so they have different versions of the chemicals. They have the liquid version, the powder version, and the tablet. I've been doing this quite a while and I've always been urged to get the tablets mainly because you don't have to measure anything. You just simply drop it down the toilet. Um, the powder kind of goes everywhere and you have to measure it. The liquid you do have to measure as well. So if it was me, I would get the tablets. It's already predetermined amount of uh, uh, chemical in it. And the way it works is I go dump my sewage. Then, as I mentioned, I dump my grate to flush out my line. Then I close both of them, come back inside the camper, run a little bit of water inside the toilet and then drop my tablet. I'm good to go for that whole tank. It'll, it'll clean my tank. It'll help with the smell and it'll actually try to knock off some of that trash that may or may not get on some of those probes inside the tank that help it read what level it's at. So that's a very major thing. Um, I can also kind of guide into the electrical on here. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of questions regarding the electrical. Um, this particular unit is a 30 amp unit. Uh, which means if you don't have a 30 amp breaker box set up at the house like a campground would have, what I would suggest, uh, if you didn't want to spend the money, what you can actually do at the store, we have a 30 to a 110 adapter. Uh, basically what you do is you plug your cord from your camper into that, and then you plug that into an extension cord. And basically what it'll do, it'll run your refrigerator and it'll actually keep your battery charged, which is my main two things that I'm concerned with. Now the only thing you can't do is actually run the AC. If you would like to run an AC at your house, you either need to be on a big enough generator to support, or you can um, have a 30 amp breaker box set up at your house. So kind of just wanted to dive into that. And I always encourage all of my customers to at least do the research for a surge protector. Uh, basically what a surge protector does is eliminate all the bad electricals from getting inside the camper and flying any of your appliances. Uh, on this particular unit, you would need a 30 amp surge protector. Uh, and the way it works, you plug it in, it'll run a diagnostic test, it'll give you a green light for go, and then you plug your cord in. If it surges or drops in uh, 
uh, it drops in voltage or anything like that, it'll actually kill the power to the unit so you save everything. A lot of people don't even realize you buy a $5,000 TV or even a $500 TV, you have a circuit breaker, you have a, you have a surge protector for that. Just apply that to the amount of what the campers worth. You really want to protect uh, your camper. So just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, you can do your research online. Um, down here, one more thing. I do have a safety feature. Uh, all of our units have what's called an LP detector, which is a, just a basic gas detector. And what it does is because it's heavier than air, it's going to drop down. That's why the detector is so low. And let's just say, for instance, we actually left the pilot light on the stove on, like I mentioned earlier. It'll actually go off and I'll make it quite aggravating and quite loud. Um, now, just because you're hearing this doesn't necessarily mean you have a gas leak. It'll let you know. It could be two other things. A lot of people, when you're actually cleaning the camper, a lot of the aerosol cans will set this off too because of how sensitive it is. So if you are cleaning, leave the door open and have the AC on just to kind of circulate some of that air. Uh, and the other reason would be, this is actually hooked up directly to the battery on the front of the camper. So if that battery ever goes low and it's not getting that recharge from the converter, it's gonna start beeping and it's gonna be out of it. Best rule to, of thumb is, when you hear this, turn off the gas bottles, make sure you completely turn off the gas. If it continues and persists, uh, the battery is low unless you've been cleaning. So just keep that in mind. Hey guys, we're outside of the pool where we were just inside of. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to go over. Uh, this is a very important part of this. I'm gonna actually close these bottles right now. Now, up top, we have the five gallon propane tanks. A lot of people call me back and actually ask what they should do in certain situations. The best rule of thumb, the best thing to do is don't actually keep both of your bottles open all the time. You actually open up one bottle and close the other. And I'll tell you why. You can actually get an accurate reading of how long one bottle lasts. And when you're out of propane, you're only out of one, not both. And you don't have to cut the trip short. So. If you're asking me, I would open one, keep one closed. Now you can take one step further than that and you actually have this selector switch on the front. Now you're gonna see a little point on the side of it. That is what bottle I want to start on. So I, it does not matter the orientation. It could be this side or this side. Uh, and you pick which bottle you start on, open it up. When you run out, you swap this over, open this bottle, close this bottle, take this bottle off, go fill it, and then vice versa as the camping trip persists. But you'd be actually be surprised how much this will actually, how long it'll actually last. So I don't think anybody will have a problem with that. Up front, you have your electric jack. This one is very, very simple. Extend and they retract just to get on and off of the truck. And uh, it'll actually serve as a pretty good tool to level your camping which is the next portion that I wanted to go over. So I don't ever perfectly level my camper ever. Uh, what I do is I get it perfectly level and then I hit this up just a notch because what I'm trying to do is I don't want standing water on the roof. So what I do is I go right above level. That way the water goes to the back of the camper, not the front and make all this muddy. You want to get the back muddy. Uh, and you don't have to worry about standing water or leaking or stuff like that. You don't want to get too crazy because what will happen is if you go too much of an angle, your sinks won't drain right, your shower won't drain right, nothing will actually go to plan. So don't get too crazy with it, just go right above it, okay? If you come back this way, a lot of people get the stabilizer jacks wrong. So let me just dive into that a little bit. The way I usually do it is I get off of my vehicle, I use my electric tongue jack to level lengthways, and I'm either on some blocks that I rolled over to level widthways. If you're usually at a campground, you're on concrete, you don't necessarily have to worry about side to side that much. Uh, it's more front to back. And the way I do it is I get it level, 
and then I come to my jacks and all I want to do is put a block under my jack and get a tension down on it. You don't actually want to raise the camper. You don't want to put too much tension. Just get a get a, a nice firm grab on it. That way, while you're in there, your camper isn't rocking. Now, on this particular model, these are manual jacks. They do have an electrical option for a button. Uh, but on this one, all I would recommend, this is a three-quarter socket. Uh, I have a impact with a three-quarter socket on it, and I do it with a drill instead of doing it with the actual manual crank that was under the bed we saw earlier, okay? Once you have those jacks down and firm, that's when you can go inside the camper, bring your slide rooms out, and start camping. Now this right here, a couple of things going on right here. You do have the storage compartment right here. This is what I wanted to talk about. This is that fresh water tank, the holding tank, uh, as I called it earlier. This is the field for that tank. So say y'all wanted to go dry camping or camping in the middle of a parking lot, no water hookups. You put your water hose right here and actually fill that tank up. Once you get out there, that's when you turn your pump on. Uh, a lot of people ask me about filling this. I usually start filling this and I keep an eye on my monitoring tank, but what will actually happen if somebody starts talking to you, you get distracted at the camp, whatever the case may be, it does have a vent right here. So if it does overflow, it'll overflow underneath or right here. You'll know when you're starting to overflow and to go cut it off. So I do like that. It will not overflow inside. Aside from that, this is the water heater. A couple of important things about this one. On this particular model, uh, you do have the gas switch on the inside that'll only uh, heat up your water on the propane side. This, they have a black switch at the bottom right here. This is an electric switch. Meaning, if I turn this switch on and I'm plugged into uh, electricity, it'll heat up my water on the electric side so I don't waste the propane. So when I get to the campground, the first thing I do after I level and I'm, I'm situated, I come check my pop-off valve, make sure I have water in it. Once I see that water, I know it's safe to turn my electric switch on. So I would turn it on, give it about 20 minutes, you have hot water. Now here's the thing about this. So say you have, you have a couple of people that wanna shower or you yourself are just taking a long shower. You can actually turn both of them on and the, the water will actually stay hotter for longer. So there will no be, be no harm in turning both of them on, okay? Only thing aside from that is this right here. This is very important. This is called an anode rod. It's not actually screwed in right now. I'll kind of show it to you. What this is is a magnesium rod and it goes inside your tank and it gets all the impurities out of the water and it sticks to this. The problem with that is that it'll actually start eating this up. So you do have to check this once a year, change it once a year. I know when it's time to change mine when my water is actually getting a whitish or a milky color. That's when you know it's time to actually change this out. This is what a brand new one looks like. <laughs> so I'll put that right back in. We can make our way this way. Now on this particular model, we have two different discharges. Uh, what we're looking at right here is the, just the gray tank, your galley in the kitchen, the sink. This is the drain for it. What I would recommend is for this unit, I would get two 10 foot sewage hoses going into a Y and then a 20 foot sewage hose after that going to wherever I'm dumping at. And then at the end of my sewage hose, I had a clear 90. That way, while I'm dumping everything, I can see when it's clean and when it's not. It'll it'll definitely save your life and it'll let you determine, oh yeah, it's clean enough without wasting too much of your time. Um, right above this is your furnace. This is the exhaust for your furnace. When you're running your propane heater, this is all the exhaust coming out. That's why it's on the back side of the camper, the non-camp side of the camper. You don't want to put nothing in front of it. You know don't want the kids to come run and play with it. It does get hot when you're running it. Uh, a bonus tip for these is the water heater. This grill right here, there are bug screens to go over that because what does happen is dirt daubers tend to make a nest 
in anything like this. Anything with that's open, they will find a way inside of. So that screen will really protect you from dirt daubers getting in there, making a big uh, nest of dirt, which can complicate the exhaust and complicate the fan, and then we really have issues. Uh, those are both available in our store. Uh, just ask one of the associates when you get here. Now, I did want to go touch base on the slide room as well. Uh, on this particular model, we only have the one. A couple of things you're going to realize. There's actually two different sets of rubber seals right here. You have a bulb seal right here that helps lock out the water when this slide room is actually closed. It'll smash it like this. And then you have your sweeper seal or wipe seal along the side edges. That way, if it's raining and you happen to come in with the slide room, it'll wash it like a windshield wiper. What you don't want to do is spray this down with a WD-40. A WD-40 will lubricate it for about a day or two. Then it'll start to dry it out. That's when you have dry rot, cracks, water leak. So what I would suggest, we have some uh, rubber seal treatment is what it's called. Uh, you can actually use silicone spray. Uh, I use the clear one uh, that, because it's way cleaner. It doesn't look bad. Um, and you want to spray that depending on how much you're actually using the camper. Now, uh, when I am not using my camper, I have my slide room closed because I don't want the sun to touch this. So anytime I'm not actually using it, my slide room is closed. The only other thing that I really do is before I come in with my slide room, I make sure that no trash or debris like from trees or limbs are actually on the slide room roof because it can tear while you're coming in. So it's nice to either carry a ladder with you or most of our units have ladders on the rear end uh, that you can go up there and make sure it's clear of debris. Uh, one other important thing is if you come right here, you'll see the actual uh, rack and pinion system on this slide room. You have one on this side and one on the opposite end. The most important thing is this right here is referred to as a bell housing. From the bell housing down towards the camper, you want to use a dry lithium grease or that silicone spray will work just as well. But uh, you want to keep that heavily lubricated as long uh, as well as the square tubing with your gears. Keep all of that lubricated on both sides. The way I do mine is right when I get to the campground and I'm out, I spray a lot. I spray heavy and I let it sit the whole time I'm camping. That way when I'm done camping, it's dry and I won't actually get anything on the inside of my camper. So that's a, a good pro tip for y'all. Uh, a couple of other things. Up top right here, you do have your city water connection. This is where you're gonna have your hose and your water pressure regulator. The reason why I'm saying that is when you go to a campground, a campground has so much pressure because it's feeding so many different campers at one time, the pressure is high. You don't want to hurt none of your lines inside your camper. So there is pressure regulators available in the store that you put on, then you put your hose. And basically it keeps it in that range, a comfortable range for your water on it so you don't bust. Okay. You have an outside shower, which is actually a hot and a cold with a two foot hose. Uh, so you can rinse off your feet, uh, any, any kind of cooking outside, you can wash your pots, pans, stuff like that. So that's really awesome to have. And back here is your second dip dump or discharge. Um, you have a black handle for black water. You have a gray handle for the gray water. Again, I dump the black first. Then I dump the gray because it'll flush out my line. Okay. A lot of people uh, actually use the bumper as a storage when they're done with their sewage hose. Uh, unfortunately, on this unit, because you need the live, it's not necessarily going to work. It'll only hold one of your um, sewage hoses. So I would encourage probably getting a plastic Tupperware to bring with you just to keep clean and out of the way. Back here, we'll have the cable and the satellite hookups for when you're either at your house or campground. Um, I always call ahead and see if they have a satellite uh, prepped lot. That way I know if I have to pay extra or not. 
Spare tire, all ready to go. We did see the tire cover underneath the bed. I don't actually put these on until uh, it's requested by a customer. This is the power cord. As I kind of dove into earlier, our service is only a 50 amp service. So what you're looking at right here is a 50 to a 30 reducer. So I can plug my cord straight in. And of course, because I only have one AC, there's no issues. Uh, you do have the ladder to go back up. All of our ladders will have an indication sticker. This one is rated for 250 pounds. Uh, so just have a look at that before you just go on up there. And we're on the entertainment side. This is the outdoor kitchen area. I just pulled this tray out. This has the uh, cooktop that is not uh, seasoned yet. So when you do get it, you might see a little discoloration. It doesn't mean it's bad. You just wanna season it like you would a black iron pot. Now, uh, this particular one, this is a gray sound, I do like these. You push in and that's your igniter. You don't actually have to light it with a manual lighter. It will light itself. And you do have the drip pan for all the grease that you could catch. And back here, we have the LP Quick Connect, which is your LP gas line that'll hook up to this Quick Connect down here. Now that's directly off of your bottles. Say, for instance, that you do not want to run your gas line to this, you have another burner that you wanna hook up to there. That's perfectly fine. What you have to remember is that this is all low pressure. So a crawfish burner is not gonna work. Uh, you also don't want to use anything that is all, uh, it has a regulator on because the bottles in the front already are regulated. So if you had a regulated in the front and you're regulated in the back, it's not going to be much of a flame. So just keep that in mind. And I'm going to go ahead and this. You do have storage under here for cooking utensils. You always want this strap before you go down the road. Now this right here, this is our mini fridge. What you gotta remember about this is unlike the one in the inside, this is 110. Uh, it's a 110 volt refrigerator, meaning when I unplug, this will turn off. So you don't wanna keep anything major, anything important in here while you're going down the road, okay? A lot of people ask me about the bearings. A lot of our units have this same setup. Uh, even though it's not this model. These are called the buddy bearings. So basically they have this rubber grommet. You pull this grommet out and your greaser for your bearings are right there. You don't have to actually take the tire off like you used to do in the olden days. So that is very, very good to have. Makes it very much easier. Um, I usually add grease about every oil change. So that's roughly about 5,000 miles. Uh, and on a camper, that's a model. So just keep that in mind. Up here, you have a 110 plug-in, a regular plug. You're going to have a cable hookup for a universal TV mount that you can actually hook up a TV right here and watch TV with your own and out. It's nice. It's nice. Up here, this is, this is kind of minute, but I like to go over this. A lot of people struggle with these, and these are absolutely the best stairs to have. Um, only thing you got to really remember is have your door open all the way before you actually start to come up with these because the tabs on the side will damage the door. So that's that's the first thing that I always look for. Once you come up, it latches into place and then you can go ahead and shut your door. Coming down, door out all the way, pull your pin and come down. Now you're gonna notice that you have the silver tabs right here. This is for adjustment on your steps because every different terrain that you go on, it may be different. So I always go down. This was kind of bouncing. So I know I have to raise this side up. Now it's sturdy. And then I know I'm good to go. And I believe that is about it for us at Primo. If y'all have any questions, make sure y'all put comments down below and uh, happy camping.